Living in the information age, we are so concentrated with all the stimuli that bombard us that we can come to think that life was always like this, when in reality this lifestyle has only existed for a pinch of all history. To put us in perspective, compare the 25 years that the internet has been massively distributed to the world with the 200,000 years that modern humans have existed. Or even more interesting, compare that time we have been on Earth with the 13.8 billion years that cosmologists think the universe has. We are almost nothing. Of course, everything we see today did not suddenly came. We are the dominant species on this planet thanks to the accumulation of knowledge from generations to generations, we understand how we are here because we study the past. Trying to think about every single event from the origin of everything until today is impossible, but it is worth reviewing the most important events to have a clearer idea of how we got here. Therefore, this time I have selected what I consider the eight most important events in the history of the universe and our own history as humans, starting from the Big Bang to the current information age. The Big Bang The first and most important event on the list. Before the Big Bang theory, the universe was believed to be infinite and eternal. Today we calculate that this event that gave rise to the universe was approximately 13.8 billion years ago. Here it is important to disprove the myth that the Big Bang was an explosion, when reality was an expansion of space. It is said that the universe expands on itself by pure logic, because the universe cannot expand towards something else, since the universe is all there is. The Big Bang is just a name given to it by astrophysicist Fred Hoyle, who ironically was never in favor of this theory. The Big Bang theory does not describe the exact beginning of the universe, since the current tools and knowledge are not enough to fully understand that precise moment of the Big Bang. What the theory does describe is the evolution of the universe after that event. Cosmologists believe that the entire universe started so small that the size of its space may have been like the size of a soccer ball. This little universe was an immensely dense and hot environment. The problem with this is that atoms could not be formed, and free particles like protons and electrons prevented light from traveling in a straight line. The expansion of the universe caused space to rise rapidly and the temperature to drop. Which brings us to the next point. The formation of the first atoms. It took nearly 380,000 years for the universe to cool down enough for protons to combine with electrons to form the first atoms. This phenomenon is known as recombination. To be exact, the first atoms were hydrogen, the first element on the periodic table, and also the simplest. This event is important, not only because it originated the first atoms, but also because it resulted in the cosmic microwave background. A form of electromagnetic radiation that fills the entire universe until today and is one of the biggest proofs of the Big Bang. And what does this have to do with the formation of atoms? Remember that light is an electromagnetic wave, with the photon as the protagonist. The recombination I told you about allowed light to travel freely, because now that the protons and electrons formed atoms, there were no longer free particles that continuously absorb and refer back photons. So nothing before this point in history can be seen today. To the cosmic microwave background we call it background, because we do not perceive previous light. And we call it microwave, because this light has traveled for so long, that its wavelength has been stretched, as you should know, there are only a few wavelengths that we can see, which is called the visible spectrum. We can only see wavelengths between 400 to 700 nanometers. Microwaves are longer lengths from 1 millimeter to 1 meter, so they are invisible to our eyes. Fortunately, they are not harmful like gamma rays. The end of the dark ages. We are 400 million years after the Big Bang. This point is known as the end of the dark ages because it is when the first stars are born. Although does not make much sense to speak of darkness when there is still no living being to perceive light. As I told you before, hydrogen atoms began to form, which would soon form clouds of hydrogen gas. The universe cooled down enough that gravity can group hydrogen clouds together and apply high pressures to them. With this came the stars, and with the stars the planets. We will discuss this in more detail in the next point. The planet's formation. To understand the formation of planets more easily, we must go deeper into the formation of a star. So for this event we will take our solar system as an example. We are located 4.6 billion years ago, the solar system does not yet exist, and there is only a cloud of gas and cosmic dust. 
In the center of this zone, most of the material was concentrated, causing a gravitational collapse in which a rotating disk of the material was created. This disk is known as protoplanetary disk. Our sun began to form in the center of this disk, an area where, in addition to accumulating most of the matter, it also maintained high pressures and generated a lot of heat that would eventually trigger nuclear fusion. And about the planets, not all of the protoplanetary disk material was direct to the sun. Pieces of the remaining dust began to come into contact, grouping together and becoming increasingly massive. These groups will grow to be several kilometers in diameter and will collide and form even larger bodies that will accumulate more and more collisions for millions of years. All this process is called accretion, specifically planetary accretion. With the nuclear fusion, our star began blowing a solar wind that cleaned the rest of the material from the protoplanetary disk, sending it into interstellar space and ending the growth of the planets. Water reaches Earth. Something very important to know about stars is that nuclear fusion occurs in their nuclei, which unites nuclei of atoms to produce more complex and heavy elements. Among these heavier elements is oxygen. After millions of years these oxygen atoms will be circling through space along with cosmic dust, eventually the hydrogen and oxygen atoms that are in the cosmic dust grain will form chemical bonds. And as you know, water is H2O, only that in this case it would be in its solid state. As more and more water molecules form, ice sheets will build on these grains of cosmic dust. And now, how did all this water get to Earth? There are two popular theories that are easily compatible. The first one says that this cosmic dust with ice clustered and collided on Earth or on rocky bodies that eventually collided on Earth when it was forming as we saw in the previous point. The problem with this is that almost all the water would have evaporated since the Earth was incredibly hot from all the material that collided for its formation. The other theory is that about 3.9 billion years ago when the Earth had cooled down enough, it was bombarded by a large number of comets and asteroids that carried ice with them, which would form the oceans. This was called late heavy bombardment, and it happened not only to Earth, but also to other planets like Venus and Mars. Both theories of how water got to Earth are quite questionable, and perhaps in the near future, we will have a clearer vision. The point is that Earth got water, and with it we come to the next big event. The beginning of life. We are located approximately 3.7 billion years ago, which is the age of the oldest fossils that we are aware of. Now that the Earth has an element as essential to life as water, other equally important elements are needed for its formation. We would need an energy source and some elements and compounds essential for life, such as carbon dioxide, methane and phosphates, to name a few. Since there is now water, these elements can mix and react with each other to form life. But an ideal place to do it still required. In those days the ultraviolet radiation from the sun's rays was so high that no organism could have survived on the ocean surface, so scientists point out that life most likely was born at the bottom of the ocean, with an alternative source of energy. The hydrothermal vents. These vents are a fissure in the Earth's crust, through which sea water flows into the nearby magma chambers and is then ejected at high temperatures, along with various minerals and chemical compounds. There are two types of hypothermal vents. Black smokers and white smokers. The black smokers release water loaded with various essential elements for life like carbon dioxide, but at an excessively hot temperature. So today it is believed that life was formed thanks to white smokers, which is rich in methane and has friendlier temperatures. The black smokers close to the white ones could have given the other essential ingredients such as carbon dioxide. With all this would give rise to what today is a great variety of life forms. The appearance of the modern human. 65 million years ago a meteorite hit the Earth, causing the death of 75% of all species, including dinosaurs. Small mammals would have survived underground, and now that the dinosaurs were gone, they were able to thrive on the surface. Taxonomic categories, or taxons, are used to classify living beings, which are based on genetic similarity and the structure of the living being. When we speak of a modern human being, we are speaking of someone who belongs to the hominid family, who is of the Homo genus and Homo sapiens species. A gorilla or a chimpanzee are hominids too, but they are not the same genus as us. It is believed that 3.9 million years ago the first hominid to walk on two legs emerged. The Australopithecus. But this one was not of the Homo genus. The Homo habilis that emerged 2.3 million years ago is considered the first Homo, it used tools that were technologically improving. 
Later, through evolution, more species of the Homo genus emerged, such as the well-known Homo erectus, who probably was the first to master the use of fire and managed to survive for almost 2 million years. Other notable species were the Neanderthals that still existed when Homo sapiens appeared 200,000 years ago. That's right, when we came into the world there were six other species of the genus Homo, and although we don't know what caused their extinction, it's probably because they didn't get enough resources, or perhaps there were annihilations between species. When Homo sapiens got alone it is still a matter of debate, but we have a range of between 10,000 and 15,000 years. The point is that the modern human improved from generation to generation in all areas. Fishing, language development, mining, hunting, manufacturing, and 12,000 years ago humans developed agriculture, and with it, it did not take long to form what we know as civilizations. The Information Age in Google also called as the Third Industrial Revolution, began in the middle of the last century with the invention of digital technologies. One of the most important areas was communication, with the famous information and communication technologies. This made the flow of information much faster and started the information age. Between the 60s and 70s, what we know today as the Internet would develop. A giant network of computers that are connected to each other. In 1991, the World Wide Web would be created, or also called only as the Web, a huge collection of information that is accessed through the Internet. In 1995, restrictions on the use of the Internet were dropped, which allowed its commercialization and massive use. It was in 1996 that two PhD students named Larry Page and Sergey Brin were developing a search engine as a university project that they initially called Backrub. But after receiving financing from investors who saw potential in this project, Page and Brin founded the company Google on September 4, 1998. That today it has more than a billion active users, offering free services that make life easier for us, such as Google Maps, Google Translate and many others, and it even has its own video platform that it acquired in 2006, which is probably where you are seeing this right now. This is how from the Big Bang we got to today that we have Google. A journey of almost 13.8 billion years. In the not-too-distant future we will take a closer look at some of these events and others that I have omitted here. That's all for today. If you liked it, don't forget to visit the channel and subscribe to support this content. Thank you very much for watch.